Good afternoon. On behalf of my uh, co-speaker, Hedrin Sum, and myself, thank you so much for having us. Our talk today is called From View Sheds to X Sheds, Remediating Historical Experience Through Immersive Environments. This paper introduces the project's X Sheds, an interactive art history of experience, which explores the multifaceted nature of subjective experience through deep modeling of historic spaces. Building on the principle of the view shed, which describes the visual field from a given point of view, X sheds or experience sheds uh, <clears throat> seek to model the multiple inputs that shape our or our historical actors experience of the landscape for, uh, from or within a particular environment. Combining geospatially aware three-dimensional models grounded in archival and field research with visual and literary materials and experimental approaches to user interface, XSHEDS offers a productive alternative to textual description and analysis in understanding and engaging with the multisensory and cognitive dimensions of experience in historical environments. Next slide, please. In its current phase, XSHEDS focuses on the so-called 36 Jing, or scenes, of Bishu Shanzhuang, a large imperial park palace constructed by the Qing court over the course of the 18th century. Next slide, please. The 36 Jing, which were first named by the Kangxi Emperor during the initial construction of the park, existed in both physical, if ephemeral and changing, reality, the subjective experience of an individual at a given moment in time, and in printed and therefore more fixed form, which captured the Emperor's own appreciative descriptions of the landscape. Individually, they frame the experience of specific ideal spaces within the larger landscape. Together, they create a network of meaning spread across the whole of the park and multiple itineraries for the emperor and his guests to traverse. Next slide, please. Traditional scholarly descriptions of experience are constrained by the limitations of linear narrative and print publication, thereby missing the multifaceted, simultaneous nature of our engagement with culturally mediated environments. XSHEDS offers an alternative approach to scholarly presentation and viewer engagement with historical experience. By presenting the landscape in interactive, immersive form, XSHEDS enables the interrogation not only of the scholarly interpretation of historical environments, but also of the process of historical research itself, how we know what we know, and vitally, our position relative to the past and our reconstruction of it through humanistic scholarship. Beyond the specific imperial landscapes of our work, XSHEDS aims to explore how art historical, or more broadly, visual and multimodal approaches to history lead to a greater appreciation of the rhetorical power of the visual as a mode of expression and interpretation. We are particularly interested in how developments in the technologies of seeing shift and expand the possibilities of visual methodologies and the contribution XSHEDS might make to developing a complex form of intertextual and intermodal literacy in our digital present. Slide, please. XSHEDS represents the, next, the third phase in a long-term engagement with the potential for topographical and architectural analysis addressing issues of periodization in and development and experience of Bishu Shandrung. Foundational to this uh, effort was building the Bishu Shandrung Historical GIS, which I did with a Sydney-based GI scientist, Kareli White. Drawing on primar primary and secondary sources and fieldwork, the Bishu Shandrung HGIS incorporates data on dating, architectural typology, function, and architectural association. The Bishu Shandrung HGIS captures the more than 1,000 architectural features built over the 18th century within the over 10 square kilometers of the total site area. Slide, please. In the second phase of the project, I was joined by Hedrin, an information scientist, and Bijou Dinopolon, a scenic developer for, cine, uh, for cinema, both at Nanyang Technological University. Our virtual mountain estate project proposed a dynamic interactive platform for ongoing and new research and its dissemination that centered on a multifaceted 3D model of the park's physical environments, including architecture and landscape and its experience. The project originally envisaged a custom-built interface through which researchers and other users could explore existing research by the project team and query the database to create maps and models of their own. Slide, please. 
VME was interested in how the materiality of space from text attached to architecture to the assemblage of hundreds of individual structures into a broad landscape environment shaped the human experience of built environments. In the context of design landscapes, such as Bishu Sandwang, this means accounting not only for the materiality of architecture, but also for the environment, including topography and hydrology, plantings, and when appropriate, animals, as well as for the material and natural effects of the passage of time. The specific foci of our work during this phase was to develop a workflow for modeling spaces that accounted for the technical scale of the project and the modularity of the architecture, and to use that development process as an opportunity to understand the historiographic and ethical concerns that might arise from positioning a contemporary viewer within realistically or naturalistically modeled historic environments. In the process, we confronted several issues, including the weight of the models and the difficulty of confirming precise architectural details due to the absence of appropriate arch archival records. We also continued to grapple with the problems associated with free movement within a landscape that consists not simply of a series of static architectural configurations, but in which highly contextualized cultural meaning plays a particularly important role. Next slide, please. The idea of an X shed emerged uh, directly from this challenge. Hedra and I became concerned with two interconnected questions. How could the model best reflect primary source data and minimize conjectural modeling? And how should the viewer be enabled to interact with the model so as to prioritize the critical analysis of pre-modern spatial experience and minimize the problems of free navigation by a contemporary subjective actor? What emerged was the decision to focus on modeling Bishu Shandrang's 36 Jing. Within the garden itself, the Jing consisted of single or multiple structure architectural settings located within scenic areas marked primarily by oral or visual stimuli. These sites were then further shaped by architectural inscription, short text physically mounted on the buildings that provided specific cultural references that framed the environmental experience for the visitor. The physical Jing were then virtualized by an imperial book that captures the scenes in combinations of images and imperial poetry. In both their physical and textual and pictorial forms, Jing are thus interpretations of specific moments within the landscape which itself may be best understood as the product of cultural mediation of the land. By focusing our modeling on Jing, rather than on the Park Palace as it, was, as it really was, so to speak, we acknowledge that it is not possible to offer a transparent window onto the past. Mediation through our own historical, social, and cultural positions, and through the tools that we use, is inherent to the process of modeling historic space and experience. An X shed, what can be experienced from a given position or in a given environment at a given moment in time, thus echoes the Jing itself. And the experience offered to the viewer through the historical X shed is one that echoes the multivalent experience that the emperor intended his guests to receive. Now, to speak more about the X shed's concept model, I'll pass it over to Hedra. Thanks so much, Stephen. And now let me share about the concept of model of X sheds. Through AdSearch, we aim to provide a framework that extends existing geospatial technologies to virtualize virtual spaces into augmented, experimental, and realistic environments. So basically, we want to bridge materiality that define a landscape or environment to human experiences. When we talk about materiality, we are basically referring to the following to, that define the scenes of a cultural landscape visuals or imagery that include pictures, paintings, maps, diagrams, or even metaphors. Texture that include literary texts, inscriptions, and historical manuscripts, or any form of published scholarship. Historical GIS data that includes geographic information that changes over time, such as DEM models and coordinates. So this is the very first stage of our research that Stephen have earlier mentioned. And activities include gathering, analyzing, organizing, digitizing them, and modeling them. When it comes to modeling, we have three steps. Using software like Maya for modeling the individual objects and elements, 
Sultan Spinter to create textures of 3D models, and a game engine like Unreal to create material libraries, reusable ones, and eventually to integrate them to create scenes and environment. So back in 2018, when we first uh, started the modeling process, there isn't much programming packages that we can use to link GIS data to game engines. So we did some work around then, that is to extract uh, imagery from Google Maps and then map it with historical maps to consider the changes to the landscape over centuries, which you can see here. But now we learned that there are more possibilities now with new SDKs available, such as the ArcGIS SDK for Unreal that is launched last year. Throughout the whole modeling process, we continue to reference the materials that we have gathered, right, to create the different elements and libraries, which I will show in the next few slides. But here, you can see the individual elements of an architecture structure, like the doors, the windows, the columns, the beams, right, being modeled by referencing photograph or architecture plans. We also include elements from the environment, from the natural landscape, like plants, flowers, which was um, described from the poems written by the emperor himself. After which, we start to compile them into reusable material libraries that we will eventually integrate to model the environment or scenes in the, in the environment. Textual libraries. Material libraries are individual architectural components. Libraries of building structures in the landscape. And here is what we have achieved so far. We do have a web interface that presents the materiality and the understanding of the landscape so far. We also use it to uh, facilitate the organization of the materials, right? Uh, such as the description, the photographs, um, and any other materials that relate to the materiality of the landscape. We also include uh, individual 3D models of the building structures and eventually how they were being put together with other building structures of the landscape. So due to time, I will just uh, skip to various scenes. So modeling for us is just not just about modeling or, or rather not just about conversion and digitizing uh, physical elements into elements of, for the virtual world. And it's also part of the whole entire experiential research process that we deal with ambiguities, uh, uncertainties, you know, reflecting our, our individual experiences, develop some kind of possible scenarios and more importantly, to track the assumptions that we have made. The current stage that we are at in modeling is on human experiences. And experience, by definition, is all about doing, seeing, and feeling. And feeling is what we would like to focus on at this stage. So what do we mean for modeling? So this means that we need to have some kind of a mindset shift or, uh, or, 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 or a perception change from visual to sensory, from spatial analysis to experiential analysis, individual to holistics, views to scenes, and certain point of view to what we can experience in a virtual space or virtual world of the landscape. More critically, we move from what does it look like to what does it feel like, where we start to identify different stimuli for materials that we gather which could be environmental, sensory, or physical. So let me just bring you some examples. So here are two poems from the 36 scenes as expressed by Emperor Kangxi himself. We have highlighted those texts that provide references to his experience or scenes in the environment at his time. Text highlighted in blue refers to the physical stimuli, which could be you know, the, the, the fragrant plants, the red flowers on the cliffs, the blue green stream that is clear and shallow, while the yellow highlighted text refers to some kind of poetic 
a metaphoric expression like floating white cups, this embarking at the paradise of Peng Lai and Ying Zhou. The current research stage also leads us to critically consider the types of delivery mechanism that we want to build, where the multiplicity of both physical and digital human experiences are fused together with the architecture, structures, and environment. This will include exploring various technologies, including those that are relevant to creating digital twins, virtual worlds, and augmented worlds, and ways of visualizing concepts and ideas to make them accessible across time, culture, and media for the viewers to experience the given landscape. So this is what we have to share in this presentation. And as we, as we embark on the next stage of this research, we really welcome uh, further conversations, potential collaboration, and feedback. So thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>